It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> yeah guys, it's time again for a package from China, but this time we're going to take a close look at the Texho mini PC that I recently purchased. So basically on the channel here, what I wanted to see, what kind of options do we have if you're going to get yourself like a second-hand PC or just buying a, let's say, second-hand-ish new version from AliExpress. Well, what do I mean with uh, like used-ish, like say new? That is quite simple. So when you're looking at this, it's absolutely not a new PC or the internal parts. So you can order all kinds of mini PCs from AliExpress, but it was a company selling all kinds of versions. And I mean, like we do get the same shell, it comes with a very nice bracket, a power supply, even like double Wi-Fi antennas. But in here, we're going to get ourselves a mini PC. And this mini PC doesn't even matter like what kind of or version you're going to buy you're going to get the same housing or it seems to be but they're only having difference with the internal components i personally don't know how many of these companies are out there making this but the texho basically i'm sure you know it's a kind of weird name texho or something like that but basically what you're going to get is a mini pc that you can order with a certain kind of and say cpu and the most interesting one i picked up was the i5 Okay, so what you need to know is like you do have all kinds of versions, but the main problem I'm having with these devices, if you're going to buy one with a very fast CPU on the inside, you're going to pay a lot of money. And I just want to keep it like simple and just want to keep it cheap because I want to see what we can do when we're going to buy like the cheapest version and what we can do with emulation. For example, in my previous video, I talked about the Lenovo, this Think Center you can pick up for not a lot of money. And this one even came with an i3. But you do have so many options nowadays when it comes to mini PCs. All kinds of Intel variations. Think about first up to, let's say, maybe the seventh generation, and they are like very cheap to buy. But that then remains the question how good is a new kind of version with an older chip inside? And in this case, an i5, is it still worth picking up? Especially if you want to look into emulation and building yourself like a retro game beast. So if you're going to look into retro emulation, if you're going to look up the really old school stuff, think about up to PlayStation 1, these devices can run it without any hassle. So basically for that, like if you want to play some old school stuff, I think both systems, or better said, all three systems will be fine. And it's more the question what you prefer. The first thing that I think is big of the downside to the Raspberry Pi 4, you need to have some knowledge about the Raspberry Pi when it comes to Linux and let's say scripts and stuff like that. I think it's not that super user friendly, depending on what kind of operating system you're using, of course. But in the end, this thing does have like a lot of potential, but will have some things that it can do. For example, if you're going to look into MAME, we cannot really play some Tekken MAME or some other MAME games that we can play on a medium PC. And there we go to get this minor advantage compared with the Raspberry Pi 4. And the price, this thing retail for around like 100 euro and even more sometimes, where we do have like a very cheap mini PC sometimes for 65 or maybe like a part of the Raspberry Pi price. And like I mentioned before, so when you're looking at this tiny Android box, it's maybe powerful enough to run most of the retro games or very nice resolutions or the normal native resolution. The thing is, I love these things for just your basic typical gaming. Some have an on-off switch, some don't. But in the end, like if you're going to the higher end stuff, PlayStation Portable is absolutely a no-go. Especially when you're looking at the main, the same story like the Raspberry Pi, we do have some limitations over there. Another thing you can get yourself is basically like in kit. And what do I mean with the kit? So nowadays we have the option to get yourself like a very nice case like this. And in the inside, we're going to find stuff like and two controllers. And they are like ready to go to show like your high quality chemical PlayStation 2 controllers with a dongle. And inside we're going to get ourselves a hard drive. And what is very interesting with the Pauki pad, for example, we can just plug it in. You only need to add your stuff and you're ready to go. So that's very convenient if you ask me. It even comes with a very nice protection plush. <laughs> you pay a lot for basically like a couple of things. They even include like some manuals to say like how you need to add stuff, how you can need to connect to the internet. But this is like a more easy way to go to. And the craziest thing is they even sell it in all kinds of versions. And yeah, think about like all kinds of formats, like 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte. You can just grab yourself an hard drive. You don't need to buy anything and just slap your files on and you're ready to go. Okay, so next up, what we need to do is very simple. 
get yourself the part that you want to have. For example, the hard drive, the USB or the SD card. We're going to convert some Podocera on it. And when it's ready, we can just slap it in and start messing around with it and build yourself like a retro emulation beast. Alright, so what you need to do before you can, of course, play some retro games, you need to download the Bodocera Linux. You're just going to need to go to the page itself and go to download. Here you will find the page where you can basically find all the files that you're going to need. So we're going to use this version, the standard desktop or laptop version. It's basically used for the x86 and the x64. So you can see like they even have one specially for the Intel NUC and even now they, on, on Apple based computers. But another thing that is pretty damn cool, we have Bottlesera for all kinds of handhelds, so it's quite an interesting piece of software that has been ported to so many pieces of hardware. Nevertheless, there is so much stuff that we can do with it, but in this video we're going to focus on the PC. So what we're going to do is download this. You can use a direct link or a torrent file seems to be, and yeah, basically get this and put it on your hard drive so we can start. Okay, so the first thing I find quite weird and interesting at the same time is like, we do have like two USB 3.0, that is interesting, but also weird. And the reason is because they are not on the back, but I will show you later. We do have two USB ports, then we have like a jack out, do have the option for a microphone, and of course we do have an on and off switch at the front. Construction wise of the mini PC is quite okay. They're using this very thin, let's say metal. They come with a very nice rubber feet. So that part is not bad at all. The only thing that is like what I already mentioned before is like it's kind of weird that we do have like only the option for yeah the USB 3.0 at the front and not at the back. So we do have like another like two sets of USB ports in total four. So we're going to get eight in total. We also have like a jack out and a microphone here, VGA out, and this one does have HDMI out and the input for the power supply. The power supply they are using is a very nice one. This is a 12 volt of 4 amp, quite heavy one. And also it doesn't get really hot and gets a very nice light over there when you plug it in. Okay, but the question remains like what can we do in the inside? So you do have like these mini devices that have the option to a 2.5 inch hard drive. But it's convenient if you just want to build yourself like a retro game beast, it's super easy to do so. Because you can just plug in the hard drive. But there we're going to get basically the first problem I'm having with this thing. There we go. So when we're going to open it up, you will see we have a problem over here. There is so far, I can see no way of adding a 2.45 inch drive. There is a lot of room in here, but not enough. It seems to be for a 2.5. We do have like the eight gigabyte storage over here. Sadly, there is only one eight gigabyte and none, let's say dual channel. Okay, then we have like the fan and this is what I mean. So basically they're using an old chip in the inside. I think it's refurbished or something, but it completely designed a new main board and made it a mini PC. Here we do have like the Wi-Fi. There is no, and that's something you can maybe order or upgrade, but you can basically say you can implement an M2 and SSD. So that is even an option. So if you're going to get yourself like a big one, this is a 128 gigabyte I've been laying around, you can plug it in. And if you configure it with Bodocera, you have everything that is just inside the machine. But again, that's unfortunate. There is no 2.5 inch SD or normal hard drive you can put in this thing. So in my opinion, a little bit of a bummer. And also this freaking fan is quite loud. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. So that left us with no choice by using the 3.0 at the front. Don't want to use the 2.0, uh, otherwise yeah, we could use it, well, let's say, from the back. So I'm not the biggest fan of the user Z3.0 at the front, but nevertheless, it's what it is. Let's try it like this. Let's plug it in, let's boot it up, and let's try some games. Let's just see what can we actually play with this old school i5. But personally, I am not the biggest fan of using USB 3.0. Oh, don't get me wrong, like it's not super bad or something. But if you want to just make yourself like a mini PC and just want to use it like that, like a retro emulation beast, it's so much easier to plug it in and just have a lot of fun. But let's wait to this boot up and let's see what we can play because that's the same thing I'm really curious about. How far can we push this old school i5? Alright guys, so when you're looking at an image of Bodocera, of course, there is a lot of stuff that we can play with. And I was really curious, like, how far can we push this? So the first thing that we're going to try out is with some MAME. Then later on we're going to test out some N64, because this is basically something you cannot really play great on the Super Console X Android Edition or with MU Alec. So we're also going to do that. We're going to mess around with it. I can already tell you, like, with an old school i5, I would not say, like, we can even play some PlayStation 3 or 2. We do have, like, a lot of limitations, so I don't know how far we can push it. And again, like, how good actually it is for your money. All right, so the first thing I wanted to try out is Atomus Wave. And why am I surprised this doesn't run very well on this? 
you would say like with an old school i5 this is like so much power back in the day you can able to run some Amatama's wave but i am guessing that this is actually like a problem when it comes to compatibility with the cpu that is the only thing that i can basically think of a little bit of a bummer it's not a great start but don't lose hope let's see where we can play more when it comes to main all right so next up what i wanted to try is killer instinct for main because this game doesn't run very well on let's say on raspberry pi or you need to overclock it as crazy to get it at least like run a decent frame rate and here you can see that despite this old school let's say i5 we do have some issues with that hummus wave somehow but when you're looking at some main it seems to be running just fine so if you just want to have something like this for old school main games give me just okay Alright, so next up, let's try Killer Instinct 2, just we're like testing it anyway. But it's same like with the part one, it seems to be running just fine. Alright, so next up I wanted to try some N64, and the reason is very simple. A lot of, let's say, cheap devices, think about Super Console Lakes, do have so many issues when it comes to N64. And just to see what happens if we're going to grab ourselves like an older PC. So far, so good. They have even better performance than most Super Console Lakes devices. right up in the face you feel lucky punk all right so unfortunate we do have a lot of problems with some dreamcast here you can see sig naomi is absolutely unplayable So we're going to move back to MAME. Another test I wanted to try out is of course some MAME with Tekken. And the reason why, because this is another game that doesn't run well on in Raspberry Pi or in Super Console X. But it runs perfect on this mini PC. So let's test some more games, one of those great examples, a lot of devices, think about Pandora's Box, Super Console X, or some other weird device that doesn't even run Mortal Kombat 2 at all, or not great. Crap, I knew he was going to do it, <laughs> and I let the freaking duck button go. No, you cheap ass, cheating biatch. But depending on what kind of game you want to play in combination with what kind of emulator. For example, for example, Sega Saturn is running pretty damn good with some two-dimensional stuff. It will have issues with three-dimensional stuff, that is just a fact. But it's pretty damn cool to see that we do have the option to play some two-dimensional games. I can hear it stutters here and there, but not really noticeable to the point that it's going to be quite annoying. Alright, so next up I wanted to try some Bloody Roar 2 on the PlayStation 1. Yeah, it's not like the most interesting system nowadays, simply because there are so many ways you can play PlayStation 1 now. But again, I just wanted to check it out, benchmark it, and from this point on, it's a little bit disappointing when it comes to emulation performance in general of this mini PC, but we still have like a lot of cool stuff that we can play with it. But in my previous video we talked about an i3. Basically you think like an i3 is slower than my i5. But when you're looking at the specs, what we're going to talk about later on, I'm going to do like a side-by-side -side comparison of all the mini PCs. Let's make like an ultimate guide for the budget way to play. 
Unfortunately, with this version, I didn't even have the option to play PlayStation Portable because it just crashed. And I've noticed, depending on what kind of emulator having combination of Redis set like a support with the chipset or the CPU that I'm running in this, yeah, and maybe I made a big mistake of buying a really old one. I just wanted to see like what can we do with this old school i5. And if you're buying like a new computer with an old chip inside, is it then worth picking up? Or is it just maybe a better option to just check out an old school Lenovo or Dell and just get yourself one of those? What a thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, becoming the Wicked family. And it would be great to see you in the next video.